Half a day and good morning. This roundtable hearing has now come to order. It is 10.16 in the morning in accordance with open government law. Notices were sent out on November 13th and the second notice on November 16th. Today I want to thank uh, Lieutenant Uggen for coming forward today um, to discuss the changes that we are looking to make in 5GCA Chapter 60 Fish Game Forestry and Conservation Article 1. 9 GAR Chapter 1, or correction, 9 GA1 Chapter 11, Hunting Regulations, and 9 GAR Chapter 12, Fishing Regulations. So some of these, as we discussed in another meeting, LT and some of these things that we are looking to change is also, um, also to uh, appeal to the Joint Enforcement Agreement uh, for additional funding, uh, just to acknowledge that anything that is a felony remains a felony. There are some areas in the, chap in the statute that we are looking to increase from a misdemeanor to a felony, and some that are misdemeanors to uh, downgrade to a violation. And so uh, the first question that the public is concerned about is the movement from misdemeanor to violation, and, and we're gonna go down each line, and maybe you can speak on uh, each section and why we are looking to make that classification change. Okay, so we are starting with 5GCA Government Operations Chapter 60, Fish, Game, Forestry, and Conservation 60. Fish, Game, Forestry, and Conservation Article 1. No, this one right here. Okay, so the correction will be chapter 63. Yes, Got it. Okay, section 63104 uh, is the taking of fish with explosives, which is now a felony and that is no change. So the following is no change. Yes, Use of explosives, unlawful, no change. Taking a fish by means of poisons or intoxicating substances, unlawful, no change. Use of poisons of, or intoxicating substances, unlawful, no change. Use of electrical devices, no change. So all of these, our current classifications are felonies and there is no change to their classification. That's what we proposed to Okay. <coughs> we propose that those statutes remain in place. Okay. So now we go to 63109, which is the possession of dynamite, explosives, poisons, or intoxicating substances. Uh, the current classification now is a misdemeanor. Yes. And, yes. And then we are looking to upgrade it to a felony. To a felony offense, yes, ma'am. Yes. So can we, now I, perhaps we can start discussing each classification change and the, the purpose behind it. Okay. The reason why we want to elevate that charge is due to the fact that the destructiveness of, of dynamite versus the habitat uh, that we are there to protect. Not only does it kill the fish, and and not everything is collected at that by this method because of the destruction, but it also destructs the habitat that that uh, is needed to replenish this uh, resource. So that's a that should be a, a, a higher offense, uh, in my opinion, in the law enforcement section. And plus, not only that it. It's also a deterrence to, to possess this type of material, especially in this day and age with other crimes related to explosives. Okay. Um, forgive me, colleagues. I'd like to thank Speaker for being present today and Senator Castro, thank you. Uh, we also have uh, Tino and Jason. Jason. Jason, Mr. Gutierrez. <coughs> okay, 63110. Possession of elect electric shocking electric devices shock. yes. is a misdemeanor and we are looking to increase it to a felony. Yes. Again, the reason for the increase in that is, is we, we want to also provide a deterrence to this method because not, it, it not only harms what the individual is, is trying to access, may it be fish or shrimp or wh whatever, it kills everything else. Causes a great deal of loss to the other resources involved, uh, which may not be desired for the perpetrator, 
and that in, that itself is 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 what we're trying to uh, protect and, and regulate and make it a, a stiffer offense for that crime. Um, the next one is fishing equipment met and methods is a misdemeanor, so that's no change. Mm -hmm. uh, section 63.112 A, B, C, D, fishing with gill nets, the Tekken, yes, is a misdemeanor now, and we are looking to downgrade it to a violation. A violation, yes, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> And the reason for this is if, if, a, if an individual is in the process of catching fish illegally with the use of a gill net, uh, again, we are looking at manpower hours and processing hours that we, we, we see, we deem that it's not necessary if we, we could just simply write a citation and have the person re, uh, uh, discontinue his activity. And then he could take that to, to court if he wishes to challenge it. And that, it's, 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 to me, it's more feasible for us to move on to continue protecting the resource instead of being bogged down for this for any length of time, depending on how much gear and, and uh, resource was taken during this illegal activity, when we could simply write a citation and then move on to the next case. Okay. Uh, so it, perhaps we can talk a little bit sure. more about the process since we're discussing okay. it now. Uh, <clears throat> with the process of writing a citation versus charging them with a misdemeanor. Sure. Uh, the process that it involves, the time it takes, uh, the impact it does to your manpower. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and also the delayed response it will have if you are working on a processing an individual and there's another crime taking place. So maybe you can talk a little bit about sure. that because I think a, a, a big portion of these classification changes has to deal with that, but also some um, trying to meet some federal or national standard for your yes, joint sir. enforcement agreement. So if we could touch so, on that too right now so it can be very clear. We are trying to move in towards the national standard as far as processing uh, cases that involve illegal activities, okay, whether it be intentional or not intentional. Some people don't think they're breaking the law, but they actually are. That's why I say that. But the way it's done throughout the nation in other jurisdictions is if there is a violation that is not a felony, they are treated with a citation and they have their chance to argue their case when they appear for that. But as it stands in Guam right now, if I were to apprehend a person or two for illegally fishing for a method violation or a marine preserve violation, I would have to first of all apprehend the guy, then take him into our office, process him as an arrestee, which takes a couple of hours, maybe anywhere from three to five hours, depending on how many people are involved. And then not only that, I have to uh, inventory, inventory all the gear that was taken because it is confiscated under Title V. As, and then when I'm done with that, depending on how much gear that is, we have to move into the resource that was taken and inventory that as well. All of this is a ton of man hours that can be alleviated if we just write a citation. Of course, any resource that is taken under this illegal activity is still confiscated. The person or persons cannot take that home after they are given a citation. But that's how simple it can be. One officer or two officers can write a citation and hand it to them. They understand they got to vacate what they're doing and then we move on to the next case. That's how, how streamlined this can be, resource uh, sh savings to the government of Guam and to the, to the fishermen. We're not there to prevent fishing. We do not want to prevent fishing. We actually encourage more fishing, but we got to do it the right way. So this is about individuals that are not doing it the right way. That's what we're trying to streamline. No, I do not. That's what I was looking at in here. Um, I was looking if you could get a copy. Yeah. Okay. 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 Chief, if you want to. Okay, so. Just a second. The uh, speaker has a Lieutenant, question. Lieutenant, just if you, you told us what, what's involved when you uh, when it's a crime, a misdemeanor or a felony, how you yes. have to process that. But then when you were talking about if it's a citation or a violation only, you would issue a citation on yes. site. Yes. They would vacate the action. Yes. 
You said you could still confiscate resources. We still have to because it belongs to But what to about the uh, gear? No, we, that's, the, that's okay. the beauty of that's it. That's the we difference. Don't, yeah, and because okay. we encourage them to continue fishing, just got to do it the right way. I don't want to take away his net. First of all, I don't even have an evidence room for all of that stuff. We've learned from okay. previous years that we got so much stuff that we end up with, even though it's forfeited to the government of Guam. Now what do we do with all this gear? You know, and it's still usable. So we don't want to take that. We want to encourage that person to fish, but do it properly. That's why. I think they should just keep their gear. We remove the resource, and then they go on their way. Yeah. And then can we just... Sure. We're at 63112, I believe. Okay, 112. Okay, and then just go down the line. Okay. Just give a, a basic explanation sure. for each change. Okay. So, okay, we, we talked about the gillnet already. Okay. There, okay. As far as as far as the uh, the statute um, concerning gillnetted fish, it is illegal to sell gillnetted fish, and uh, that's why there's a big there's a big uh, uh, what do you call it? Re there's a, there's a lot of regulation regarding gillnetted fish. Okay, it, it is illegal to gillnet, I mean, to, to uh, commercialize gillnetted fish. And this is all about resource uh, rehabilitation. We're allowing the, the, the resource to continue populating. If we will have a lot of people doing this uh, type of method, then obviously we're going to have a depleted resource. I believe that was the intent, Chief, of, of why that law was put in place way before my time. But that's why we enforce that. So, the, uh, when, just to add to what Mark said, the biology behind gillnetted fish is that it basically renders the fish, kills the fish basically. So with, with using non-gilling, you can literally take fish that you're not supposed to be harvesting and release it and the fish are on their own merry way. With gillnetted fish, it really renders them, basically kills them. So the take is take. It's, it, you can't really release that fish for the most part. It, it basically debilitates them. Is that is that on? Yeah, there you go. There you go. So so the gilling is is destructive way of taking fish. Basically, is the way it is. What you want to do is net fish and have the ability to release them as you uh, you, you know as if you use the tekken or you do it uh, that way. The fish that you don't want or are not supposed to be harvested, can be released alive, and, and they can be on their way. Okay, so going off with what the chief is saying is, well, if that's why we're still allowing the, it's still allowed to gillnet fish for home consumption, but not for commercial sale. Because any, any resource that is not wanted will, will then become wanton waste and end up on the shores uh, and causing different, different issues. Okay, so that's why we have that. As far as fishwares, again, um, same same concept. Okay, fishwares are are they, they, it is required a permit, but no permits are being issued for this type of, of uh, fishing uh, method because of the fact that we are we are limited in our resources right now. We're trying to expand on that, but also because of the fact that there are now other rules and regulations regarding anchoring systems, which falls under the Army Corps of Engineer, any type of anchoring must be approved through that system as well. So fish wears require that you anchor down your gear uh, um, in order for it to work and be in place properly. Some are actually uh, uh, um, have to embed into the reef in order to properly install that. So there's a lot of issues with that fish wears. Okay, the uh, the, six, uh, the taking of fish under 63116A and B, um, I believe this will fall under the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, uh, marine protected areas. As, uh, okay, and again, for as far as the fish, as far as taking fish illegally under this statute, we, wanna, we want to uh, decrease that from a misdemeanor to a violation, so we can issue the citation as well. As, as you, you already know that we are very short in manpower and this will help us in our operations. Is there a history why it was a misdemeanor in the first place? 
Um, I'm not aware of why it was a misdemeanor in the, in the beginning, ma'am. This is, this is way beyond before our time when this was uh, first created. I believe it was put in place for, to, to, to protect the resource, but now that we are understanding that there is other ways to do this and do it efficiently, that's why we're now trying to do it as, make it a violation. But back then it was just to make sure that people will not do it uh, illegally. That's why it was put as a misdemeanor or a felony to classify it back then. So for some, it may be interpreted as moving a misdemeanor down to a violation is basically just a slap on the wrist. And, and it, it, if we... What will be the... How will that deter for, uh, okay, future so, actions by uh, lowering the classification? Okay, so what we proposed in the fee schedule, that's where... The, the, the community needs to understand if they once they see the fee schedule then they'll understand that the citation is not a slap in the wrist because there's a first offense that's proposed which consists of the, the fee itself then the second offense which consists of the fee and proposed uh, community service I believe it was and then the third offense may result in not only the fee, but actual jail time if the, if the activity continues. It, it's a three strike, you're, you're out uh, mentality. Proposed schedule. Yeah, that's okay. all proposed. Now, as far as what is the fees and all that, the only proposal that we want to put forward is per count. Uh, one fish, one count, 10 fish, 10 counts. Each fish should be protected. Uh, whatever that dollar figure is, is not up to me. It's whatever the people decide. Okay. So if there was, uh, five fish caught, ten dollars a piece. Ten times five—that's what the fee, the citation should be. That's how it worked. Okay. So it's not a slap in the wrist. Okay. <laughs> and then, so can you just further move down? Sure. <clears throat> sure. Thanks, Cap. So I'm not familiar with the judicial system. Maybe the vice speaker can help me. So, am I to assume then that if it was a misdemeanor or a felony? This, and I agree with your logic, by the way, Cap. Sure. Am I to assume then that the fee associated with the violation couldn't also be prescribed to a misdemeanor or a felony because, because it's a different classification or? Felony cases are brought before the prosecution under general crimes. They have to show in court for, for the person themselves, for the crime they committed. If, it's, if, if it involves a citation the any, any or misdemeanor, it can be uh, entertained either by uh, legal counsel or uh, by a mitigation process. Doesn't necessarily ha mean that the person has to show. And history has shown us with the Attorney General's office being overwhelmed as it is, on the prosecution side under general crimes, uh, very, very, very few and far between anybody going to court for misdemeanor crimes. Thank you, Cap. So I guess that helped me clarify my question. Sure. So a fee for a violation, it's not, they're not mutually exclusive, that violation versus misdemeanor. I can also have a fee for a misdemeanor or a felony. Again, I don't know about the felony. May, it it may, would depend on the court. Yes. Okay, I understand. Yeah, okay, thank not, you. That, that helps yeah. me think this through. Thank just, you, sir. Just to be clear, the proposed fee schedule, there, we're looking at a process of first, uh, first strike, second strike, third strike. There's no monetary attachment for this fee just yet. That still has to be discerned upon. Yes, ma'am. And so uh, we need to continue to discuss if there, what will the fee be and at the amount. Mm -hmm. And this is specifically for those that are in violation with granted that we downgrade misdemeanors down to a violation and this will be the deterrent, a deterrent for those for future actions because of the fees that will be proposed and impacted by those that are doing some, something illegal. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So as it stands right now in the books, regardless of how much resource is taken, if an individual is apprehended for a violation, the maximum fee is straight up 500 bucks, $500. And if you see some of the cases involving illegal fishing for persons taking fish out, let's say out of a marine preserve, sometimes they have two, 300 pounds of fish and there's X amount of people involved in X amount of gear. If you 
tally that up versus what they what what would have been paid it, it doesn't it doesn't match the crime so that's if they even get that far in court which a lot of times it doesn't we end up in civil court pretty much what is taken from the individuals that are committing these crimes is just gear and which they can replace for less than $500 each person okay and can you just share a little bit why it doesn't end up in civil courts? Uh, civil court, yes, ma'am, it does. It's the or it's the uh, the general crimes court. It doesn't go there. And for the what we understand, we're being uh, told is for misdemeanor. It's a misdemeanor classified as misdemeanors. The one most of the cases that we get, and uh, the attorney general doesn't have the manpower to take all these misdemeanor cases to court. Uh, we just had one served to us the other day. Individual came to us and said, "Hey, my case was dismissed." I need my stuff back, and I'm like, sir, where did you go? Was it general crimes or civil? And he was saying, oh, I think it was the prosecution side. I said, well, you still have to deal with a civil side. So prosecution denied prosecuting his case, and he thought he was free and clear to come and get his gear. Okay. When I informed him yesterday that there's still a civil side, it's a different ball game now. Right. So that's why we're trying to just say, let's just stop wasting a lot of resource and time. Let's write these citations and we'll move on. Okay. Yes. Yeah, if, if I may, I, I, I think uh, uh, I can agree with uh, uh, Officer Agun's uh, summary of some of the uh, different things. I think what it is is, is looking for an expedient way uh, of, of dealing, an efficient way of dealing with this, the different modes of violations. I think that, that's where we want to go. And I, I kind of agree with uh, what, what makes me a little uncomfortable at this stage, uh, I'm, I'm not sure, it sounds like Mark has uh, spoken to the Attorney General, is my feeling is that when we, usually what I'm used to is, is we come up with proposals, we get feedback from the Attorney General, informal, uh, formal response. They tell us whether or not we're fooling ourselves or we're on the right track, and that's, you, and then we come back and, and uh, uh, revise whatever proposal we have for regulations, whether it's fees, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and so uh, that's kind of like where I kind of feel a little uncomfortable as far as this goes, is that the interaction with the Attorney General should be here because technique, like Mark has indicated, when it comes to litigation, that's their job. That's not my job, I'm not a lawyer. And so uh, whether or not we have the, uh, uh, the evidence, et cetera, and everything is in, 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 uh, in the right place, that's how we want to proceed, I, I think, is, is the way we want to look at a lot of this stuff. Um, uh, I kind of agree that, that we need to move to a little more efficient way to deal with some of these things. It doesn't make sense to tie up all the resources for violations that really can be dealt with in a little more uh, expedient fashion, so to speak, more efficient way to deal with it. And that way we can move forward and not get bogged down. I agree with you, the, uh, the, the backlog of cases is, is really unfortunate and that has to be dealt with in a real logical way uh, and then the but then the other side of it too you don't want to make the public feel that the violations are unimportant or not really and that's where I think we all all are as far as outside <laughs> thank you uh, that's where we are we want to get to a point where the public feels the uh, uh, the resources are important enough to be to dealt with. And how many times have you jumped in a car and said, oh, wait a minute, I'm going too fast? You slow down because you know what the repercussions are. I think this is kind of like where we are as far as this goes. Is that, thank you, thank you, yeah. Mr. Thank you, Tino. Uh, this is a round table hearing. Sure. We're discussing this now. Yes. And the purpose of the round table hearing is yes. to gather all the information from all heads. Sure. And so we will continue. It is, it is not written in a bill. Yes, yes. And this is open for the public to also make comment. Yeah. And so thank you for that. Uh, okay. We'll address also the state action plan uh, to discuss mm. perhaps some of what is going on with mm. the state action plan in uh, okay. uh, 
as we move forward, but right now we are focusing on the classification changes. Okay, and so please, uh, yes. LTO, can you please move forward with that? Thank you, ma'am. So, when we're talking about uh, 63, uh, 116 A and B, we're now moving into the activities within the marine preserve, okay, which are vital to the resource uh, resources for the island of Guam. Okay, <clears throat> under the current law, um, they're they're regulated. The marine preserves, the, there are special permits that may be issued from the Department of Agriculture (DAR) uh, regarding seasonal fishing, which has been working very well uh, as far as access to these fishes within the marine preserves, and it also uh, protects the other resources involved in select marine preserves. The <clears throat> It's sad that a lot of the cases that we are dealing with involve violations within the preserves and takes a majority of the officer's time to pro process. We're same, same concept, everything we regarding all these issues from this point on uh, as far as fishing regulations. It's same reasoning. We need to move to the next case. We need to save up the resources where we can, we can uh, uh, streamline our work and do more better job for the community and the resource. So we would like all those um, cases as well to fall under the violation other than the felonies, if there's any involved. Okay, so with, with this, I believe this majority of this discussion right now is, was all for fishing related uh, uh, issues. Um, access now, let's say for example, is to the boat basin. That is not our, our uh, issue with this department. That belongs to the Port Authority of Guam. Although the resource is regulated through us down there, uh, it's access with whatever type of method or gear is solely under the uh, the purview of the uh, Port Authority Guam general manager, not with the Department of Agriculture. Just wanted to point that out to make sure we all understand. Now, if there's a fishing violation down there, for example, if somebody were to go down there with a gill net and was, was, was uh, observed catching, let's say, mackerel with a gill net and then commercializing it, that's now an issue we deal with, just that part. But the access to the boat basin proper is an issue that will be discussed with the Port Authority Guam General Manager, not our department. We only, uh, we only uh, uh, regulate the method itself, not the access. So moving forward with our discussion, we're now going into the uh, 63121 to 126 regarding illegal hunting. <clears throat> Again, we would like to, to uh, reclass, reclass some of these issues from misdemeanor offenses to, uh, to, uh, what do you call it, uh, violations. For example, just mere illegally hunting, whether it be without a permit or without proper, uh, without proper uh, uh, equipment. Yes, ma'am. Um, we, we feel that we should just be able to write a citation for that. Now, the only, the only time we should be making an arrest for a person that's committing a uh, illegal hunting activity with something involving, like, let's say, an unregistered firearm which is a felony offense, okay? Or a stolen firearm, which is, again is a, is a felony offense. Uh, firearm related issues, or may it be a stolen vehicle because there's a lot of vehicles involved with uh, uh, hunting on Guam. May it be illegally or legally, there's, they, they, uh, everybody uses uh, some mode of transportation. So where it be any of those instances where under Guam law that they're committing a felony offense, we would, of, of course, follow that higher statute and go ahead with the rest. But for merely, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, uh, 
uh, violating a hunting rule and reg, we would simply wish to write a ticket for that. And then again, we would like, as far as the fee scheduling a discussion will go, is per count, one deer, one count, two deers, two count, or whatever it is. One deer, one count, one pig, one count, whatever the game they caught in that illegal activity, they should be, uh, each animal should be protected, not just one instance of $300. And uh, I, I know uh, if you're not aware, aware, one of our cases just a couple weeks ago involved uh, a very high profile arrest where we were managed to, to take off the streets of Guam uh, altogether, assets, uh, uh, illegal drugs and, and uh, money due to these proceeds, a little over 770 plus thousand dollars worth of, of uh, uh, illegal contraband and I've been saying it for a long time that natural resource crimes a lot of them especially the hunting side mostly are linked to to the illegal the, the drug trade and and we're trying to be able to separate the violations from these cases that we need to concentrate on and these areas that we need to concentrate on so that's why another reason why we're doing this as well so again Going with this, we're looking at 63124 A, B, and C, uh, importation, harboring, uh, 63125, use of artificial light, that's anything other than the moon and the sun, um, and uh, 63126, keeping a deer, which we now allow for livestock. We, we have a system for that in place already. <clears throat> uh, we wish to... to to reclass that as misdemeanors to uh, violations. And then we move on to 63403, which is fires unlawful, which are not. No, we, we uh, yeah, it, it has been changed. Yeah, I, I, that's been repealed. Yeah, to, that's yeah. Been and now we, we allow it as livestock. Yeah. Yes. So, um, 63403, fires unlawful, and it's a misdemeanor. We'd like to up that to a felony offense. Now, I know um, you guys are aware, um, this body's aware of the, the, the destructive, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, how destructive a fire could be from... We have a fire season on Guam. It's during our dry season, and it has impacted not just not just our our, uh, our terrain. It impacts the rivers, which lead to the ocean, which which the sediment that goes out to the ocean smothers the reef. No reef, no fish. We, you know, we operate under the ridge to reef concept. We must protect the ridge, the ridge, the ridge, so we can in essence, protect the reef as well. So right now, to, to commit this arson um, crime, it's a misdemeanor. So we want to try and deter that by making it a felony offense or um, pick up that, that charge to make it, well, they have to be more careful of as far as how this is. And I know you've seen the news recently, what happened is happening in California. It happens here. You, if you don't live on Nimitz Hill, you'll understand what these people are going through. Every year they have to almost vacate their houses or what because of grassland fires that we have in Guam. So that's, that's one we think is, is, is getting out of hand. <clears throat> it's very hard to, 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 to uh, prosecute a case like this because of the way the law is written. Maybe you can uh, research that and, and maybe help out with the investigation portion because it's almost to the point where you have to actually see the, the individual lighting the fire versus like, let's say, for example, I see a fire go up, I, I, I patrol the area to find out where the source comes from. I only find one person coming out of that area that has the signs of starting a fire on him, let's say the black stuff all over him or whatnot. And a lot of times it deals with somebody that's illegally hunting because the game love the ashes and they love the new shoots that are very sweet. 
So that's why this is done. Um, we want to be able to make a case with that. But as it is right now, it's very, very, very difficult to do that. And a lot of the fires too, or not a lot, but some of them are started with the former way of farmers used to burn the field to prepare the field for farming. But majority of our fires that are happening are in areas that are not even being used for farming. It's for illegal take of game in the mountain areas down south mostly. There are a few areas in the north that it's, it's doing like in the Retidian area or uh, NCS area that's happening a lot and up in the Jigo northeast side. Yeah, so that's why we want to pick that up. <clears throat> okay, we then um, moving towards Article 7, that's already touching that with the, the fires. And then... Um, so that exhausts uh, the classification changes for yes. 5GCA Chapter 63, yes. right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so now we'll move <coughs> into 9GAR Nine 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 yes. yes, Chapter 11. Yes. And do you have the handout for that? Oh. Okay, the, the speaker brought up uh, a question for the section 63601 uh, and 6302, the taking of live coral and harvesting of coral. Yes. It's a misdemeanor. And we both want to add that to a felony, and that's all environmental protection for the resource as well. Very destructive. We, and we're getting uh, more reports on that happening now. I don't know why it's increasing. I'm not sure yet what I, we're trying to figure out where the market is as far as why they're harvesting this coral. But there, there's a couple of, of uh, theories that are, we're looking at. One is because we have neighboring island folks here now. Mm -hmm. So the need for offok, the lime, that could be one. But we're not sure yet. We're still trying to figure that out. And the potential for, for shipping off island. We haven't... We haven't uh, pin that down yet but we're seeing a few cases where it's not arrestable but they are entertained where we're finding tourists taking corals from Guam through the airport but they're not getting through through the screening so what we'll do is we'll go up to the airport and confiscate that and then we just got to destroy that because it's already dead okay. but the big market there that we're trying to pinpoint we haven't found yet we're just thinking that that might be the reason for these up these, ca these uh, cases are starting to. Okay. Where, where, may I? Go where in airport screening would that be caught? Because I'm um, trying to remember when I check in TSA. Yes, during check in. That's when it's being. TSA is the one that's helping you to find live coral or. Uh, customs, coral? the customs side. In their, in their check in baggage at the cargo area, I believe there's inspections done. They have the resources there to. to to uh, identify that there's a potential uh, smuggling, if you will. I'm not sure if it's dog-related or x-ray, but they are finding it, and when they find it, they let us know, and then the item is confiscated there. But the visitor can continue on with his baggage. Uh, they left a, a card in the baggage that this item was, was removed, or they informed them. I'm not sure the whole process. But we're finding more of that. And not just that, there's other things that we're starting to uh, tourists. Now that we have an influx of different tourists now, we're starting to see these old problems, re, you know, coming back. So, but you are, you are proposing that we would, we would prosecute those tourists because you want to change it to I, I a wanna, felony? From no, a I don't want to pinpoint the tourists, oh. but maybe because we're also, we also have the commercial side that residents here are trying to deal with this at a larger scale like trying to get a big bulk of t corals, put it on a ship and send it out. So right now, it, it is a, uh, a misdemeanor. We want to up that to a felony. And if we have one case in 10 years, that's great news for us. But we don't want it to revitalize because we've had it in the past. And it, I think the ship was, uh, was uh, fined like $60,000 for this in one particular incident for taking a, a, a large truckload of coral I'm loading it on their ship. So we still see it as a misdemeanor. So to put the horse before the cart, let's change that to a felony offense. Okay. And then just two, two others. Uh, the fishing nets and net size is going from a misdemeanor to a violation. Yes, ma'am. And then 6306, the pelagic 
drift nets from Perhaps it you. will remain as a felony. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so now uh, let's move forward with Nyingar chapter Nyingar, 11. Yes, ma'am. And do you have the? You, you do. Yes. Okay. So go ahead and speak on that uh, <clears throat> LTR. Okay. Um, under Nyingar Division Two, uh, hunting and fishing rules and regs, chapter 11. We're talking about from uh, 11102 to. One 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 eight. That will, all of this will deal with hunting issues. Okay, from uh, legal shooting time, trapping licenses, hunting license fees, altering, barring, lending, transferring licenses, uh, which we do have uh, license in possession. Uh, deer tags, because not only do you need a hunting permit, you also need a deer tag, <clears throat> which, which allows you to take deer uh, legally during the hunting season, which is only three, three deers per season. Okay, that's a, that is a management tool for the resource. But we've, over the years, the, we've been having an increase in resource, so we've been having special hunts, which is administered by the chief and assistant chief's division that they, uh, they get the, the, the special hunting program going. And for that particular season, we allow the hunters to continue hunting deer uh, because of the, the influx of the resource to try and keep it manageable so they're not destructive. Yeah, you know, if I could add to that, what's going on is uh, we're playing a, a juggling act. One, we're trying to preserve uh, uh, manage the resource and then on the other hand we have farmers who are trying to grow their crops who are actually having uh, difficulties with uh, uh, impact of ungulates namely pigs and deer that actually make their way and find their way into their farms and so we're doing that little juggling act where we where we are constantly issuing uh, what we call revocable permits and we issue these to the farmers and they are allowed to take as many as they want as far as in, in protection of their uh, farmlands, yeah. yeah. And so that's a little <coughs> double-edged for it. On the other hand, we're, we're trying to do what uh, with the, uh, in conjunction with law enforcement is to protect the resource as far as other areas where that is concerned. And that's where the hunting or illegal hunting yes. sort of comes in. So with that said, what the chief is talking about is under 11313, which will come to that for the depredation permit itself. But uh, regarding just hunting for now, it's uh, the, the, from 11102 again to um, 11118. So any violations within this area, via it be safety clothing, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, age requirement, uh, private property access, um, use of alcohol or drugs during the activities, things of that nature. Of course, when it comes to alcohols and or drugs, uh, we also talk about prescription medications that can cause uh, a hunter to be incapacitated enough to hunt. We still would want, we would be the one to investigate and uh, maybe uh, terminate that hunt for that individual until, until he's uh, uh, capable of continuing. Those are the kind of things that we are now trained to do and that we'll look into. But as far as the violation for misdemeanor offenses, we'd like to do it, uh, change it to violations. Again, so we can move on and, and minimize time with this activity. Um, beast of burden, again, that's using, let's say, Carabao horse or anything other than your legs or a vehicle of any type. If it's an animal related, most of the time it's a carabao. Okay, again, those are the same things. We want to reduce that down from a misdemeanor to a, a violation in itself. So if I was to catch a perpetrator doing, let's say, five of these, there is the way the citation is made where we can annotate. 11113, 11116, 11118 for each particular offense is a particular, should be a particular fee schedule set for that. So he adds all that up, whatever, how many violations, 
that's what the end cost will be for that particular person. So again, it's not, uh, we're not here to deter hunting. We, we want people to hunt and hunt even more, just do it properly. This is again, part of a education and deterrence tool for this to be put in place. So I think it's a win-win. Um, going from, um, um, uh, you, okay, let's, let's go into a little bit of, of uh, 11117, use of artificial light, which is another uh, big uh, uh, component of illegal hunting, nighttime. You ever heard the term deer caught in the headlights? The reason why they say that, because when you shine a light on a, on a deer, he just stands there like, oh, what is that? And then it's taken out. It's a true fact, and it's, being, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a method used for taking legal game. And it's not just a headlight, okay? I have cases where they even use the vehicle lights. They're doing this down the roads. Let's say at the uh, Anderson South area, they're doing this. You're thinking they're DUI. No, they're using the vehicle lights to look on the side of the road for game. Okay, it's all about the officer's, uh, uh, what do you call it, observation and, and what he perceives as, as uh, illegal hunting methods. Now, under illegal hunting, there is a thing called prima facie. That means uh, prima facie, better. <laughs> she could help us with that. Uh, the person doesn't even have to be doing anything. So long as he's in an area abundant of game, he has a weapon with, with ammunition, and um, um, you, uh, artificial light, okay? He could be sitting in the vehicle in an area without any reason to be in the dark, waiting for the right time or what. He could be charged for illegal hunting. And we've... We've uh, actually prosecuted some cases with that successfully. People just standing by, waiting for the right moment. We find them hiding in the side of the road or somewhere, or they're just waiting out in the jungle somewhere, laying down with the gear. They would be, uh, it could be considered illegal hunting based on the investigation. That's so, under 63-125. Yes, so that's another thing, okay? So that's what we want to continue that, Artificial but also, again, remove it from a misdemeanor to a violation. <clears throat> this is in Nine Gar, Animal Regulations Division 2, Chapter 11, Section 11.117. That's use of lights and fire prohibited. Yes, so that's artificial light. It always go, one, it coincides with GCA Title 5. Yes, one, two, five. Yes. And then um, going from there between, um, again, now this is something that we've been discussing at our level. Uh, every now and then we're talking about this because there are states that allow the use of dogs. The problem is how do we regulate the dog itself and the protection of the dog itself? because we don't want dogs to be abused and left out in the jungle during a hunt because, oh well, he'll find his way home kind of attitude or whatever. So we don't know if we want to touch that or not. But for now, the use of dogs is a misdemeanor. We want to bring that down to a violation as well. And that would be per dog. Sometimes they have three dogs. So each dog should be a violation in itself, not just one incident. Yes. And I think that, that, is it per count? That's how you say it. <laughs> yeah, one dog, one count. Yeah. Okay. Um, moving from there, uh, one, 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 two, two, A, B, C, D, one, two, three, and E. Taking of wild deer, pigs, and goats. Okay. All violations. Just make them all violations. And then it'll be on our investigation as to whether or not it, it elevates. I don't know what the class is right now. We couldn't find the class on that. Um, right? Yes. 
so, one one two two A B C D. So this is taking a wild deer, wild pig, wild yes. pigs and goats. Goats, yes. It says the class is a misdemeanor, and okay. so you're looking at making it a violation. A violation, yes, ma'am. Okay. And then that, that's pretty much the story for everything from that point until. Um, so just go ahead and name the title, the taking of birds. Just go down the line. That okay. Okay, the taking of birds. Recovery of game. Recovery of game. If you need me to explain some of these, uh, let me know. Okay. Uh, hunting seasons and bag limits. Okay, if you don't understand what they mean, just let me know. Uh, trapping licenses required. Altering, barring, lending, transferring licenses. License to be in possession. Trapping age. Trapping assistance. Duplicate license. Safety clothing. Trapping for the purpose of domestication only. Immediate report of trapped game. Semi-annual report of trapping efforts, depredation, permittees, if I could just stop there real quick. Sure. That's where the chief was mentioning we assist the farmers and ranchers, even residential at some point with these permits because of the destruction of pigs and deer for the farms or residential areas. Okay, um, that's the re one of the main reasons why we have the Derby coming up in December. That's just one tool that we use for education and to help minimize the resource damage. Yeah. And we do that free of charge. Uh, yes. And just a little correction, we're probably going to have the Derby early January. Okay, well. No time to. But we do us. have one, yes. But we do have one. The department has a Derby. Yeah. That's just one tool that we use. Okay, and then, um, so that's what that permitting, and it's all handled by us, uh, which is working very well right now. Uh, we even have USDA Federal uh, joining in to assist the people of Guam under this, under this statute here to uh, assist the people free of charge again. And they've been very, very successful. Just in, we did it in my brother's farm, for example, they took out 80 pigs in two weeks, something like that. So it's a very, very useful tool for the island. Okay, um, inspections of trapping licenses, traps and trapped game. We have a report that's needed to be generated by the trapees to us so that we know what they're doing and how, what they're doing with the game. Um, Trapping on private property, use of lights, use of dogs, traps owned by others, uh, purchase and sale of unregistered trapped game prohibited, uh, non-commercial trapping license fees, bag limits, and commercial license fees and bag limits, um, authorized trap trapping methods, authorized trapping areas, and influence of alcohol or drugs. All of these are listed as misdemeanor offenses. A lot of these that we see on the books, they're not, we hardly ever see, but they're there for a reason because we actually had a case or two involving one of these or the other, but not regularly. So they should still stay there, but we need to reclass into a violation. Okay. okay. Uh, moving on to Nine Gar Division 2, Fishing Regulations, Article 1, General Regulations. Um, one two one zero two A and B and one two one zero four A B C D E F G uh, both um, cover harvesting regulations and gear restrictions. Right now, currently they're misdemeanors. We like to move them into violations. And then what is the deterrence for all of this is the actual fee schedules. And if we move into a stiffer fee schedule for this particular issue, then that will be the, 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 the I'll, I'll, we can make a copy, Senator, of, of this, and we can give it to you. Okay. No, it's, it's here. You're talking Nine Gar, Chapter 12, 1, 2. Division one, 2. Yes, Chapter yeah. 12. 1, 2, and, 1, 0, 2, Alpha Bravo. Yes, Alpha Bravo, and then 1, 2, 1, 0, 4. Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Foxtrot, and Golf. Okay, so these are, these are geared more towards a larger activity. Uh, we, wanna, we wanna make sure that this is looked at, that's why it's separate, because it's, 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 it's a big issue here, and uh, we hope we can get the support of the public for these particular activities. Okay, Nine Gar Animal Regulations Division Two. Yes, yes. Yeah, I just want to mention that um, on the Nine Gar for the fishing regulations, that's not the correct 
fishing regulations. We, are, we amended it uh, like in 2000. That was sent to the a, uh, compiler of laws, but they haven't updated yet. They're still waiting for some documents. So I just want to make sure that's clear. So s since 2000, you're, it hasn't been updated into compiler of laws because you're waiting for some documents? Yeah, I don't think they ever received it. I sent it to them a little while ago, but they're, they still want the figures for the, um, for the uh, what bar. Is it, what is it specific? The, you're talking about the whole Chapter 12? For the fishing, just for the fishing. The whole Chapter 12? Yeah, yeah. So you may, there have been changes since 2000 that have not yeah, been there's changes, uh, put up right. because it's missing documents. It's the figures for the length of the, the figures? species. They wanted that. Uh, figures for the length of the species, like fish okay. species, crabs, and all that, invertebrates. And you already submitted it? or No, we, we don't. I'm trying to find a copy of that because I don't have that. That's, that was done uh, many years ago. <coughs> so the original documents are... Besides the text, are not, I don't have that. How do we? They just have the text, but not the actual figures. We'd have to make the figures not ourselves. Not the specific, like if I catch a Jizu crab. Yeah, the lengths. Of, the yeah, so there's figures that show the lengths uh, uh, that you can catch. So who's, who's, who's in charge of making sure that it gets sent to the compiler of laws so that we have I, specifics? Like, um, I have a letter from a long time ago that the legislator sent to that the legislator sent to the compiler of laws. Mm -hmm. but I don't think they ever received it, so I sent resent that to them a little while back. Can, Along but with you the, have you have the figures and everything. You have that. I don't have the figures. You don't have it anymore. No. So how do we make sure that it gets done again? Then, since we lo lost the documentation, is that what it is? We misplaced the documentation, well, so now we have to... Well, I never had it. I, I inherited the uh, files, but wow. it wasn't in the files. So how do we fix it? Um, well, I, all I could think is resubmit it again. I think what we need to do is, is just consider today is time zero, and let's move <laughs> forward. I mean, that's the only thing we can do, right? I mean, I mean we're, we're, we're going back and forth on this, yeah. uh, thinking some documents should have, could have, would have been, and I have no idea. And I think we've just had those discussions. Uh, so you'll so be able to resubmit. That's I, fine. I, I think that's, that we have no other course but to do, do the resubmission. Okay, okay. Just to bring it up to date. So how long maybe, will it maybe, take? Uh, how long will it take for the resubmission? How long will that take? Us? <laughs> be oh, we could do it week? within a couple of weeks at least. Make, give us, give us, okay. what is it? Right now, November. And so what we're looking at is yeah, not accurate yeah. then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, my yeah. that's my concern. If we change, I, made some changes, then it's not going to be reflective of the okay. amended regulations. So in a couple uh, weeks, regulations. we will get accurate data yeah. or accurate information, yeah. and it will be updated. Yeah. Okay, can we get a copy of that okay. sent to the legislature also? We'll then, okay, we'll thank you so course. much. Yeah. Thank you, Senator, for addressing that. And just so you know, from the law enforcement standpoint, Whatever is in the book at this right. time what is what we enforce. So that's why I'm bringing this to you. Okay. Um, for example, I'll give you another dilemma that we are all in agreement with that needs to be addressed right away. For example, is the reef margin regarding these some of the uh, marine protected areas? It's supposed to be 600 foot contour. For example, uh, it's it, the compiler of laws, from my understanding, in error put it at 60 feet so that's in the book so if I'm going to go out there and, 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 and enforce law I cannot enforce the 600 foot contour which I know it's supposed to be proper because in the book it's 60 so that's one of the things that we're dealing with with the compiler that's one can there you is just also send an email regarding that that can be fixed very quickly? Yes, Senator, uh, thank you for that yeah. too. But we've been trying before to address this, not with you, with others, yeah. So it's been, it's been some time now. But um, that's, one, that's one particular issue. Another one is we also under, um, where is it at? Uh, for example, 60, I mean, uh, 12305. Commercial harvest of marine gastropods and other uh, bivalves and other other than uh, Trochus and Tridacna. This involves um, octopus. Okay, so octopus fits in here. Yet we have people on Guam selling octopus um, on the street or at a market or 
you know, in a fish market, or whatever, as part of their catch, they sell this to the fish market. Um, there's an issue there whether or not that is to remain in place or are we to remove other, put, add in here other than octopus? Are we going to stop octopus, commercializing octopus? I don't know. That's another thing for table uh, that we're dealing with. Another issue is the uh, collection of the sea cucumber, the balati. Right now in the books, it's 100 pieces per person per day. It's if now with everyone that's here on island, that is not sustainable. We need to reduce that number. Let's say for let's um, the next. If you have the same, the next page over uh, six uh, one two four zero two A B C. Yeah. So for the sea cucumber, uh, it's a hundred pieces per person per day. We we my recommendation. For, it should be non-commercial and for home consumption only, maybe five pieces per person per day. And that would be husband, wife, and three kids times five each. That's what we need to see. One, two, four, zero, two, A, B, C. Alpha, Bravo, Charlie. Mine says crabs, spiny uh, lobsters, other than coconut. Okay, crab. go down the next one. Uh, one two four zero two. You're at zero one, ma'am. Is that zero one? You see, or zero two? Okay. okay yes. Sorry. Okay. Yes. Th thank you, Chair. Uh, Captain Mark, thank you for bringing that up. Sure. Um, I totally agree with you that we should ban the harvesting of sea cucumbers for any type of commercial activity and Limited. reserve that for subsistence yes. consumption. But for the, for the sake of the listening audience, because a lot of people are just not aware, they're not privy to the egregious abuse. Yes. And, and it, it was fur, further highlighted uh, when I was passing through Hawaii on a trip, Chair. It, I mean, to the listening audience, it's, it's crazy in terms of what some of these folks would do to exploit that natural resource. And so could you share without going too deep into depth, but I just want you to share with the listening audience because we don't see this, but it's mm. horrific in yes. terms of what people so, do to exploit that for commercial gain. Sure. So if you want to push this back even further, why is, this, why is there a need to protect this particular uh, species? This, is, this, this creature is, is there for a purpose. So it is, cleans our reefs, our briefs, cleans our beaches and which is a lot of the tourist industry come to Guam because of our beautiful beaches, if we lose this natural part of the ecosystem in regards to cl cleansing our reefs and keeping the beaches nice and clean for our visitors, we're in, a, we're, in a big, we're in a big trouble as far as our economy is concerned. Now, one of our cases involving this take uh, because of the, uh, the amount that is, is allowed, one of our cases involved a, a group of fishermen that was hired by an international person and for export to another country. And we apprehended these individuals with over 8,000 pieces in an hour and, a, hour and 45 minutes of fishing. So that's, that was our largest case. Now we've had several cases involving 300, 500, you know, violations of, of this. And that's just part of the, the, the problem. Now we also have the problem with wanton waste and pollution where we have these particular groups cleaning these items along the beaches and the guts and goo is all over the shoreline and you know our visitors and our people that access the beaches are now looking at all this. So these are the horrific stuff that we have to encounter out there and then we have to go through these catches and count them piece by piece just to be sure. So it'll be much easier and efficient for the government and easier for the officers to to identify a violation if we reduce drastically reduce that number to protect the resource help our economy and and ensure that 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 people are in 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 uh, in uh, in line with the statute we need to reduce that number and for only for home consumption because that, that big catch was supposed to go to korea it was supposed to be pickled, and the way they were processing it in the backyard 
was very uh, uh, unsanitary. The, uh, the regulations are basically dated as far as the take limits. I, I think it was, uh, Officer Martin mentions Balati, there's a few other uh, species or organisms also that allow for some take, and that was way back when, when nobody really thought anything about doing anything for Balati. And then with all the societal, social changes, etc., uh, I think all of a sudden Balati, uh, sea cucumbers became a real issue. Uh, a favorite for uh, others to exploit. And, and with our dated regulation, they were, it was hard to enforce that aspect. And so I think, uh, uh, as Officer Mark uh, Agun mentions, I think uh, an assessment of all these different regulations really needs to be done and updated. Yes, so moving forward, um We have, we have a, a, a large issue with uh, pertaining to uh, the giant, giant clam mm -hmm. or the uh, Tridacna clam. Okay, we, we, we actually have to uh, work with other, other resource agencies to, to implant some breeding stock in secret areas just to replenish what we've lost. So we need to ensure that we protect this resource it's not only economically wise because people love to snorkel and see these animals in the in the wild, but we are also we should be also be able to enjoy it as well, so long as we follow the regulation on harvest, as per size, um, remove it from commercial sale, and make it a violation as well. It's a misdemeanor offense per count as well. Okay, we talked about one, two, three, zero, five already. Moving forward, uh, Chief J, if you have any input, you want. Um, what do you call it? Uh, okay, we're down to that. That will be from one, two, one, two, three, zero, five through seven A, B, C, and D. Okay, we take care of all the all violations, and then. Uh, one, two, three, zero, eight, A, B, A, B, and C, other marine invertebrates, including, uh, Sarah, you want to pronounce that? <laughs> so are you, are you, um, we were mentioning <laughs> about uh, commercial harvest, which is linked to commercial sell, right? Yes. Um, so are there commercial harvests of crabs, spiny lobsters? Is there a commercial har harvest that you permit for that, or...? No, ma'am. It's it's right now. It's allowed so long as you just as take as much as you want. The size and limit and no eggs. So, are you recommending that some of these things will be removed from commercial harvest and used for personal consumption or subsistence? Now, as far as the lobster is concerned, I don't foresee us having an issue right now with the commercial sale of lobster. Mm -hmm. It's it's the other stuff that it, the number of catch is way too much. That's the difference. Right. So that's what, so yeah. are we addressing the... The sea cucumber itself for now. So only that's, the sea cucumber. Yes, that's okay. the one. And the, the octopus is another one where right now it, it falls under the illegal. We would also, you know, we're not trying to discourage that from being commercialized because the so way So we're that, going to exclude it that's somehow That's something for discussion. Specifically. I'm just bringing it for... Right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. Locally caught octopus. I, I think that's where the... Uh, the take limits mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. and even just take uh, needs to be reassessed yes. as far as the uh, numbers, the numbers yeah. and regulation, because I think they all fall in that same category where the uh, the limits were dated way back, and and so there, there was, was just a number put there. out there, and and when we looked at it, I think I remember going through it and saying, oh my gosh, that's yes. that's such a large number to take even yes. right up, just for one person. And it's, it's really by one person per day. And that's one of the more striking aspects of that, uh, those regulations. It's, it's not only is the number, it's, it's allowable on the next day. So they could literally take 100, mm -hmm. wait the next day, and take 100 more, and so forth and so on. So that's catch, bag limit. That's yeah. catch limit, bag limit. That's something that needs to be addressed other than me. But again, we are not against that 
commercial sell. A lot of these, a uh, lot of our uh, community are actual commercial fishermen. That's how they make their living. We do not want to stop that. That's not what it's about. It's about making sure they have future sales. You know, you can sell X amount pieces this year, especially for the species that are that are uh, not as abundant. Stuff Protection like that. of yeah. the resource, yeah. basically. It's got to be a balance. There's got to be a balance there. Okay, another, uh, just to point out, Senator, another case that we are in, actively involved in uh, trying to to assess what the statute is saying and what is actually happening right now. We have a restaurant on Guam that is commercializing coconut crab, rubber crab, in their restaurant as one of their entrees. But the law says you cannot sell 50 coconut crabs. Uh, you're, you're limited to the commercial sale of 50 coconut crabs a year. So how are we regulating how many if this guy's this particular restaurant is selling coconut crabs throughout the year how many dishes does he serve that's the problem but not only that but where is he getting it from because the bag limit is 50 a year so who are these suppliers supplying this restaurant uh, all year long so that's one thing that we're looking at like we're trying to figure out okay who's your supplier how do we know Where's your records? We're digging into this more and more daily. Um, it was brought to my attention by one of my rookie officers that is actually, I was very, very pleased and proud to hear like, wow, this is going deep. This is a good one for learning, learning purposes. But it is a true fact. We brought the law to the table. So, okay, what does the statute say? What is, is he in potential violation right now? What's our next course of action? So these are the kind of things, the issues that the law enforcement side is dealing with. And then again, like what the assistant chief is saying, oh, we had a change, but as long as we don't see the change yet, we can't enforce it. That's our problem. So there is a separation between the compiler of laws and, and the enforcement um, community in regards to natural resource. Cap, if I could jump in. I think yes. those are excellent points, uh, I th you know, in terms of uh, digging deeper. Yeah. Um, is there anything in the statute relative to the commercial, uh, not harvesting, but uh, actually raising. I, I know uh, some folks attempted to raise them, so, mm -hmm. and, and this may be out of the scope of the round table, and you could take it offline and have another discussion, sure. but, but what's to say that the vendor didn't uh, cultivate or grow these coconut crabs, the azuzus, mm -hmm. in, at their house, as an example? Sure. And is, is there anything in the statute that helps regulate that? Sure. A lot of people don't know that if we, for the rubber crab or coconut crab to to reproduce and to grow, there's a lot of steps involved here. First of all, they need the ocean. It's part of it, yes, they need the ocean to, to uh, uh, breed and, and have their eggs. And to change in sizes, they need to shed the shell they have and produce a new shell, which requires them to burrow for a long time and do that. So to, to say somebody is gonna do this I think he should think of something else to make money. That's why it's just go catch. I think catch. the bottom line uh, to that is whether or not it's economically mm. feasible to do that. Right. The thing with coconut crab is, uh, is what they would uh, describe, I believe, is a term diadromous. There is a marine life and a land uh, right. terrestrial portion. And both phases require some degree of growth before you can actually get to that point. Um, and these these animals are not, you know, you're not looking at five or six year old. What's the oldest right. thing? You look at many many years yes. of growing before you can actually yes. get to that point. So, chair, I didn't mean to go too deep, but I'd love to come to your <laughs> office. I, I just love it so much. But at, at the same time, I, I do love and respect that and uh, the need sure. to protect our natural sure. resources. Sure. But I also don't want to discourage. Uh, other entities from taking full advantage sure. of those delicacies that make sure. this part of the world so very special. So if we can strike that balance, for example, there might be parts in other parts mm -hmm. of the Marianas where there is an abundance and there's yes. no threat to the ecosystem. But, but we'll have sure. that discussion offline yeah. and I do but, appreciate that, Chair. But that Thank too so is much. also involved in our discussion a little sure. bit as we move on to 12501A and B um, and uh, to 125ABCD. 
Okay, so we do not want to discourage, let's say, somebody going to another island, let's say Chuka Palau, acquiring permits from us, for then go over there, get a certificate of origin, get however many coconut crabs they can get at that trip, bring them back to Guam, and then commercialize it. But you got to go back to the numbers again, where the numbers say you're only allowed X amount of a year. So the balance there, now we have to, to look at how can we help that situation. That's another issue you got to look at. But again, in, in regards to that, we also want to move that from a misdemeanor to a violation where we just cite. Okay, then now uh, Division 2, Chapter 12, Article 5, moving forward to commercial harvest of freshwater game fish. We, have, we actually have fish in our streams and rivers, and some are introduced now, like the tilapia is in our rivers in some areas. Okay, that's not indigenous to Guam. So they're actually destructive fish because they eat the local fish and shrimp. Um, and then... Um, uh, freshwater fauna as well. Okay, so there are another, there, there are a whole slew of, of different types of, of freshwater uh, fish and game that we need to you know, organize them. Chief's giving me a lesson on all these big <laughs> words. <laughs> but uh, excuse me for my ignorance on these stuff. But we all want to move them forward from misdemeanors into violations. Yes, ma'am. Okay, here's what I was looking for earlier. So, pretty much, ma'am, we have covered uh, Nine Gar and and Title Five as to why we want to move forward with the different uh, classifications and and um, our, I, we, I gave the law enforcement standpoint and what we we think we should move forward to as far as now the discussion for the fee schedules and you know how we're going to measure that with counts or each or what so i think for us being in the field it'll be more efficient for us to go per count 25 fish 25 counts we annotate that on the citation and move from there simple as that uh, if anybody else wants to chime in on that one as per piece for violation now gear is gear gear one net one violation for that two nets two violations for that that's how we're gonna we would like to operate um, and move on from there and we do not take anybody's gear away we encourage fishing just do it properly we don't have to store it no manpower usage for any of the processing unless there is a felony offense hmm. okay and um and that's what we'll address at a later time. Yes. And we will make sure that the Attorney General is on board, uh, get their input and their insights, and we need to discuss in depth how are we going to go about the several offenses and the fee, the proposed fee cost. I, I do have a question about, uh, do you guys have any questions? I'm gonna uh, move over to something. No, no, thank you, ma'am. Just uh, uh, if I can recommend also have uh, maybe other members of uh, the research community here. I'm very curious as to what they have to contribute. But yes, I agree with you, the AG and other stakeholders. Thank you. The, your state action plan, can we talk a little bit about that? Uh, what is the state action plan? Uh, what, do, what does it do for uh, Department of Agriculture? Or how does it help our conservation officers? And how do we get the most out of it that we can to support and give more resources to our conservation officers? The, the uh the state action plan is actually uh, 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 the state wildlife action plan. That was a document that we had uh, um, created uh, as per our requirement from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and actually by the U.S. Congress in terms of all the different states and territories to uh, come up with a state wildlife action plan that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service would we basically accept so that we had submitted all that document uh, I mean that particular document which turned out to be about 300 plus pages of everything you wanted to know about everything else and, and uh, the uh, wildlife uh, uh, realm as far as Guam is concerned the contents of the thing included 
Uh, I believe there were eight elements that included uh, uh, the status, what is to be uh, acted on, and some of the different uh, strategies and um, <clears throat> actions to bring the certain the uh, particular uh, species to uh, out of its uh, uh, endangered status for the most part. And so it, it actually it also addressed other species that were um, considered to be species of greatest conservation need. The, the acronym SOGEN, S-O-G-C-E-N, is species of greatest conservation need. So we did an analysis and we actually did public hearings uh, in order to, uh, to uh, and when we, we actually reached out to the various uh, conservation groups, NGOs, and, and, and solicited their input as to where we wanted to go and how to do it. So that was all compiled in that particular document and, uh, and then uh, submitted to uh, uh, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service as per their requirement to, to uh, uh, meet that, that, that particular uh, uh, need or requirement. In the end, what, what, as, as, uh, what that did for Guam is it actually allowed us to actually uh, also uh, 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 what's the word, compete or, or request for different funding aspects to, to do the different recovery. So we addressed uh, the uh, habitat was one of them. Species needs were some of the things that we needed and public outreach were some of the things that we were looking at as far as uh, that particular uh, uh, document. And so uh, we are actually in the second Rever revision as far as that document. And what I like to do, I hate to say it, I, I think I'm, I'm talking at lib as far as like, uh, some of this stuff, but what we could do is forward that information as far as where we are in the, uh, uh, the document itself. What, what also, I, what I, what I uh, meant to also include was it also uh, indicate, uh, has a section regarding, and this is where uh, conservation officers come in, as far as what uh, needed to be included as far as the conservation needs and law enforcement aspect of it. There wasn't much, and I think I remember talking to you, no, Mike, about that, that, that what we want to do to at a later time, I did it as a placeholder, it's right there. And so as a placeholder, it reminds us that we need to develop this aspect. We kind of spent quite a bit of uh, time on all the different aspects, habitat, uh, maybe even laws that uh, pertain to it, uh, et cetera. And, and one, one of the aspects of, uh, that need, needs to be flushed out, so to speak, is the uh, uh, conservation and law, law enforcement aspect of that plan and to get to that point as far as, uh, as as far as where we need to go as developing that. What, what do you mean by flushed out? What, 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 is, words, what needs to be done, it, It's really? just a placeholder, but it really doesn't uh, say how, it doesn't, doesn't have all the, the elements, per se, of, of a plan as where you want to get. What, what you're going to do, what are some of the laws or documents that need to be enacted, and so forth and so on. So those are some of the things that part of the, the plan needs to be uh, developed. Was there, a plan, was there a plan for the conservation officers in 2007? You know what, I, to tell you the truth, uh, and this wasn't my uh, indication, I, I, I think what it is is that my, my uh, or our uh, uh, interactions as far as the conservation officer has been placed, we've been uh, kind of been put on the side. Uh, oh. the, in other words, the, they function really under the d director, not under uh, the DAWR. And so a lot of those things, though I, I think what we've done is kind of keep our eye out for where uh, they could actually come in and that's where, uh, uh, that document is where they can actually provide some input. Okay. 
So was there something in the 2007 state action plan for conservation officers? The, uh, I think it was very little. So there was something was, there. Yeah. But there is something that mentioned it. Okay. Yes. And um, how can we, um, what is the word? Input. How can we use this for, to, the best, to the best of their, to support their, them? I think what we can, I mean, basically what it would be is uh, a revision that we go through. Uh, input, put, uh, insert those revisions as far as uh, some of the, the actual needs of the, doc, uh, the, uh, the law enforcement uh, section needs and so forth and so on, and then put that part into the document itself. And I think would, that's the way it would be. And, and then and submit do, it to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service okay. as, as a revision. And if we do do that, how will that benefit? Well, no, we the, haven't done that yet. We haven't done that revision. I said if we do do that I think, or when I think we it, will do that? I think we could do that. Uh, we're in the process of submitting a revision. Our deadline is actually November 30th. And, and we... Yes. Yes. November 30, 2018 is your deadline and yeah, you still and just have conservation have, officers there the as a placeholder? Uh, focused but on nothing that specific for them. Excuse me? So, so the deadline is November 30th, 2018, and you, if I, just correct me if I'm wrong. Sure. Uh, so you have the conservation officers, you have the intention of including them, um, but you haven't inputted specifics. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we only have less than weeks. 10 days. I'm sorry, what, we're in November, right? Are we? Yes. yes. So we have 10 days, ten days weeks, yeah. to include them yeah but we have no have we known that they've needed sure. to be included and so perhaps there was a disconnect in communication sure. so how do we move that forward now and and what is it that we would include for maybe maybe some of the officers can speak what would be included or would need to be included for the state action plan um, the, to the u.s fish in and the Marvel. previous state action plan it was stated there uh, that there is a portion there. I think it's under section four or five. I'm sorry I don't have the document with me. No, it's I, at the office. I wasn't sure we were going to discuss that today, but it was there. And under that, under that section, it talks about support for the conservation officers. Within that state action plan, there are five, four or five elements that uh, needed to be eight. eight well, the one, the list that we were shown, is there many? Five? There are five. There and, was uh, five. I'm sorry. Before uh, we continue, Sorry. this is uh, Acting Sergeant Regadio. He's my uh, op sergeant who is here to assist with this discussion. Okay, so so in, in, in regards to the state action plan, under these elements, uh, we were to perform uh, some tasks, a listed task, in order to fulfill the, our portion of the state action plan. By not be knowing to us all this for the past two and a half years that we've been under the director's office, uh, we managed to move forward with several of these, these uh, tasks without realizing that we were actually accomplishing what the state action plan called for back then. For example, the reserve program. That's already going through the final process to be implemented. Uh, the citation program, which is what we're working on now. Education, outreach, trainings, all of those things that involved and promotions as well. All of this happened within the last two and a half years, um, to 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 our like to our you know without us realizing we're attacking the state action plan back then, which we did not even know we were part of in that regard. We knew that there was something. We heard that there was something that there was their portion there that involved conservation officers, but we weren't sure. But we did our own research and come to find out. Oh, here we are under section five, I believe. Uh, there are, it says what it's for, support for us, and then there's a list. Okay, so the, the one thing that we are looking at, we're like, well, if, this, if we're included in the state action plan, then we should be able to access this resource to help us improve. And I'm talking about manpower promotions. This is provide an additional funding source for the conservation officers if they're included in the state action plan in accordance with the requirements yes, that it is met? Yes, ma'am. With, with some limitation as far as where the, the funding. Uh, basically, our, our funding resource 
uh, precludes us from using uh, such monies for law enforcement. So that's where that's the the, uh, the juggling act we uh, we play. You're as funding far as resource, goes. but I'm talking about the state action plan. How does yes. okay? Yeah. I'm about the, state the the actual funding comes from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Okay. And and Cong the U.S. Congress has dictated that. Uh, such funding will not be used for law enforcement. So that's, that's in co uh, congressional law. So not be used for law enforcement, like for Activities. personnel, for yes. vehicles? Yes, yes. Anything that and has uh, uh, a law enforcement element to it, I think precludes us from this? using that funding. And so what we've done uh, as a matter of uh, operations, so to speak, is that local funding is used to pay for uh, the conservation officers uh, and anything else uh, associated with law enforcement. Okay. Yeah. But anything else, uh, conservation actions. So how would, how so would you benefit from the state action plan? Under the state action plan, we are identified as a recipient of some Pro, some form of, of proceed or, or assistance from this plan and it basically spells out what we need to do in order to access this which we I was saying that we actually performed a lot of it or if not all of it already so I was getting the impression from Tino that I, because okay. of US Congress it's yes. moot that funding will be given to you Yes. Well, there's a program that, that, that the chief, the division operates off of, which I understand and agree, like the sports, uh, what do you call it, the sports fish restoration program. We cannot access anything from that. That's one of the programs that they operate off of. We've identified that earlier on in our discussions. That that's, that's why we need more assistance from home. But under the state action plan, which is allocated for Guam, Okay, we are identified under there. Mm. If we're not allowed in there, then why did they identify us in the first place? No. If I could, yeah. Chair, if I could just add, so this actually speaks to a, a much larger concern at the state level, if you want to consider us a state. So while you may be correct in one or more instances for one or more plans that you cannot use certain types of monies, in this case, let's assume it's U.S. Department of Agricultural monies to supplement or especially to supplant local operations, I think, I think the challenge is, Chair, and I'd love to sit with you in this discussion, is to bring all the plans that are relative to agriculture and the management of natural resources, whether it's conservation or other parts of that, because being the former director of BSP, and I've seen that the legislature is not always tied into the planning process, and what, what, what that means is, while you may identify half a million dollars for, in this case, let's say the fishing platform through another funding source, that would then allow your local stakeholders, specifically senators, to appropriate monies uh, for other priorities that, that, that the state, in this case the Guam legislature, determines to be of the highest regard. And so, in reality, while this state plan is a good one, and it's not the only one. And so, you know, what's interesting, Madam Chair, is this state plan is a state plan for this agency. There's also a marine conservation plan. There's also a coral reef conservation plan and, and so forth and so forth. And I'm hoping, you know, with the continued leadership of folks like Senator Nelson and Vice Speaker Terlahi that I could be at the table and we can have this discussion with a much more comprehensive perspective at the, at the 30,000 foot level, so to speak. So I just want to put that on the table for us to consider, Madam Chair. Thank you, no. Senator, for I that input. Um, I just have a question. What is, is there anything that will stop you from putting the conservation, conservation officers within the state action plan? Because I'm just wondering why they no, haven't been I, included. No, I, I think what it is is, is uh, uh, we, you know, we're just a small division, so to speak, as far as the big picture is concerned. But uh, I think what it is is that we within that division have kind of acted like researchers, so to speak. So we go out there and, and do that. And so um, we go out there and look for funding and uh, uh, try and submit something real quickly. Uh, and, and you know, and sometimes some of these documents are really somebody sitting in the, the, their, their little desk and staying up all night and writing up a, a proposal. Uh, just for example, uh, just Yesterday, I was looking at another funding source, cooperative, cooperative uh, 
studies research at what's C, uh, CU, CU, CESU, uh, is another funding source, and, and uh, we may be meeting with other folks uh, to discuss some of that. But anyway, uh, that's what that is all about. And, 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 and what we've done is always try to keep our eyes out for, other, uh, for funding that, that can enhance or help uh, conservation officers as well. So, but that doesn't answer my question, Tino. Is there anything no, stopping? Can I um, uh, say something? Yeah. yeah, you know, the plan was written by uh, basically the people within our agencies. We put that plan together. We've included the, like a portion the, for the conservation officers inside there it's stating, a uh, yeah, like so a placeholder. So can they put something in I know, yes. but, yes. but um, what, I, what I'm trying to say is that uh, even though we put it in, there's certain requirements for getting the funds and I was looking uh, back online on the state wildlife grant program. I didn't see anything involving enforcement. I didn't see anything involving enforcement. It says research, monitoring. But what we can do is we can check with our grantors if enforcement, funding for enforcement is allowed. So we can do that to clarify the question. Well, in, in 2007, it was allowed. Oh, in the oh no, no, I'm, I'm talking about in, gen in general, what okay. we can do to move forward. Okay. But I'd still like to see the conservation officers within the state action plan if they if they're able to do their part. And as I'm getting the, I, I don't I'm 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 feeling some kind of pushback. I don't know where it's coming from. So no, I, uh, just I, I be think frank what it is with is the, that with we, the we've situation. Actually, we've actually looked out for uh, our uh, funding and on so forth and so on. So this is. This is... Uh, Are you worried it's going to impact your funding? Is that what it is? No, no, no. I, I think what it is is that... No, actually, I think what it is is that sometimes we don't even have enough projects to spend all the money that we can go for. So I'm not worried about that. I think what, what uh, as Jay has mentioned also, is that it's always... It's, it's not really enough... It's not really whether or not there's money. Mm -hmm. It's whether or not you can meet the compliance requirements to get the funding, and that's the bottom line. That's the bottom line as far as that. I think, uh, and Mark knows this, that every time we talk law enforcement, it's, it's unfortunate, they, Congress, US Congress has decided that funding will not be part of that whole pot, so to speak. That's the bottom line, and so that's all. We're, I mean, we're, we're, we can submit the document, but whether or not it's gonna get funded is always, uh, an interesting I'd, I'd like that. It's worth a try than not doing it's it It's worth all. a try. Oh, yeah. Okay. And, and that was the thing with the uh, State Wildlife Action Plan when we, I remember speaking to Mark and said, hey, you know, let's just put it in there as a placeholder. We could develop it at a later date. I'm sure they, they like uh, El Tiogan has stated, they, they've met some requirements in, a, no. in, in some of them. So maybe, I don't think it will hurt since the requirements are being met, but I think it's worth a try instead of sure. saying we're. I agree. Yeah. Okay. I, you so know, I, I, I'm willing, but but. Uh, so will you be able to help them to help you? We, we're, we're always <laughs> we're at the all, table, man. When it comes we're always, to. We're always doing that. Okay. To, okay. Yes. You know, as long as there's a request for assistance and discussion, we're there. Sure. You know, we're always trying to improve ourselves. That's why we're here today, mm -hmm. because of our push to get things done before we retire in the next year and the year after. So um, November 30 is your deadline to make sure, or actually <laughs> November 28, because they need to put everything together. Mm -hmm. So you have eight I days. Gonna... Our yeah, portion you know, is completed you know, to already. Tell you, no. Realistically, we're probably not going to make it. Yeah. That's the bottom line. But, but just put it in by November but, 28. But my feeling is if we don't start now, we're not going to even meet the next deadline. We Thank could you, always Tino. submit a revision. There's nothing precluding us from saying uh, but early, if it's early, done early in next 80s. year, yeah. we could submit a revision uh, and say this is our, our uh, uh, revision you know, for 2019 mm -hmm. and put those uh, aspects of the, uh, of the uh, conservation officer's needs in that plan itself. And I think I've always looked at it as a, a, as a need to expand it because it wasn't quite complete as a state wildlife, you have all the things pertaining to habitat, conservation, uh, public outreach, et cetera, but you don't have, uh, we didn't have much as far as conservation officer and, and enforcement as a, as a okay. real need. But if they're able to get it done in 
before you submit, then it should be in there. Do you, what do you think? I, I, I see you. Yeah, I just like... Um, so, if the last state plan or the last response to the state plan indicated that there were things that you had to meet, so, I, yeah, it just makes sense that if you, if you do the write-up, you write up what you would want included in the state plan, like, like the senator is suggesting, and you give it to them before the deadline. At least it's in writing and it's all prepared, and it should reflect on what you, you've met, those requirements that were set somewhere else that you've met, and then what you want the money for. And if you've done your own research as to how that money can be spent, then by all means, put right. that in writing, give it to them. But right. I, I, um, when, how often do you do your state plans? How, is that a yearly? Ten year more. Ten years. Yeah, it's. So the last one was ten years ago. Two thousand seven. Uh, this this is almost like a somewhat. Uh, all right. Uh, no, we actually did one in two thousand. Is it fifteen? Every ten years. Yeah. Well, we we did. But they're we saying did, we, did a, we did a draft. We did a initial draft as far as that document. So you were you begun so now, in 2016 like to pre prepare yeah. to prepare for the the, for the tenure. Yeah. All right, but you're not done. No. no. All right. No. Okay. Um, I I also just wanted to make a comment on the earlier discussion on 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 the f penalties, and uh, I appreciate the efforts and the initiative that you are making, and as far as the enforcement side goes, to to do what you think is is going to increase enforcement efforts, uh, make them more efficient, and all that. It's a it's a difficult concept, I think, to just even me to comprehend that we're going to change things from crime to to merely fines, violations, civil fines, and that we're going to con that we are still going to have. Um, you know, we're going to prevent the actions, right? And so I'm, I've heard your discussion on that. I've taken notes and I've wrote it down and I, I understand you are the ones on the front line. And so you, it's, I'm willing to go with your advice on that. I just think it's kind of contrary to, you know, how we came up with criminal penalties in the first place. They were supposed to be a deterrent. But you're saying, and I understand completely that because of the way misdemeanor cases are being prioritized by the Attorney General's office, they are not prosecuting these cases, so the deterrent effect is zero. And so rather than having zero, we would rather have civil fine penalties. And that itself is a deterrent. Okay. But we have to look at it this way as well. If we want to streamline the thought process on how we're looking at it, if GPD was to arrest every speeder yes. for a misdemeanor offense mm -hmm. of speeding, versus just writing a citation and going to the next one, preventing a next crime because he's out there patrolling right. instead of bogged down with a speeder because he had to arrest him. Okay. That's our problem. All right. We're arresting people for misdemeanors where GPD writes a citation and All moves right. on. Well, I understand, and, yeah. I, and I very much appreciate the initiative yeah. you've taken yeah. and your, yeah. you've thought it out very well and yes, you're willing to come here and defend it. I, really, yes, I very much appreciate that. Thank you, ma'am. I also, um, though, have some concerns about this other side of it, the way yeah. uh, our, um, I guess, it looks like our take limits and our size limits and things like that have been examined uh, continuously, I'm hoping, by your office, by your department, and that there have been suggestions for change. They've actually been adopted into law. They're not compiled, so they need to be redone. I mean, I would just go to the shortest. I agree with you, Tino go to your shortest track, but don't hesitate. I'm, I'm a little concerned about why has it taken this long? If, if it was done at least 10 years ago and we've waited 10 years to actually get something enforceable, it's way too long when you're talking about the, the parts of our environment that you're talking about are our most precious resources. So it, I don't know, I'm just going to suggest you, some, some of these things sounds as easy as an email to the chair. Just send her an email and tell her which parts of the code you need changed. Um, those, or, or resend the document that the compiler does not have and we can just readopt it again if that's the issue or, or whatever. But uh, whatever 
but I would hope that you've also updated it since then, right? How long ago was that? And are there updates that you would like to submit? And what, what is your time frame for that? You want to answer? Based I on your I, review I, I, of, of the I impact I, on our yeah, resources, yeah. right? We're talking about you clams, know, you know, uh, corals, yes. Uh, I think, I think we, we, that's one of the other things we, we need to do ASAP uh, as far as the take limits and bringing those up to speed because they are, they are dated. That's, that's no... Uh, well, that's and so well, how long can we do this? Uh, early next year, I guess, is, if, if that's, if that's uh, a good, I mean, uh, as good a timeline as I can... Uh, and, was that and part of your plan? Was that part of your plan for the year to do I, that? I, I think what, what it was is, is it was, it's probably like all part of that state wildlife action plan and looking at all the different uh, aspects. I think what put it up to uh, the, the top burner, so to speak, was when uh, the Balati incident had occurred. Right, Jay? And that was when we, uh, we said, holy moly, they're allowed 100 per day. Yeah, part of it was to update the fishing regulations, like the, they were talking about the Balati, Balati. Mm -hmm. the take limit. Then there's other things that we needed to get updated to. Also, our ESA lists, which we were going to do this year. Um, and we also wanted, since you brought up about the code, if we can also work with the, you guys, the legislature, to make a change on the ESA uh, Article 2. Because on 63205C, it says annually the department shall promulgate a list of endangered species. Um, and that list lasts 14 months after it is promulgated, and we would have to do it like every year. It's too cumbersome. We want to change it to the department shall promulgate a list of endangered species as needed. So only as needed, because it's it's too time consuming. What sure. what uh, what uh, uh, Who? probably emphasizes that that particular strategy is that. We've listed everything that possibly yeah. we want to list anyway. That, that makes and sense. And so we're, we just do it and be done with it. The other but my thing concern, is, Tino, is yes. who in your division is in charge of um, requesting these updates or, or updating your rules and regs? We've, we, it's even an issue with, with the, um, the fishing in the boat basin. that we, When we had our round table before, it was the rules and regs were not updated or things like that uh, and so I just wanted to know who's in charge of doing the, that the and when are we the thing is that uh, uh, you're looking at him okay. he's in charge of everything I'll go? <laughs> yes go <laughs> and and unfortunately that's the way it goes I, I mean I don't know how else we all uh, well we're here to help you then we if we can I think, uh, I think what help it is, you, is let's, that let us help you we yeah. under uh, the, uh, the GAR, the Guam Administrative Rules and Regulations, we have the procedure to follow, you, and you know those, right? And so we got to do public hearing, we have to do public notices, we uh, 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 then we uh, submit to uh, the governor now, right? That's, yeah, we, uh, anyway, it's the AG, we submit it to the AG, the AG submits it to the governor as per, uh, and so that's the whole process that we have to to follow, we're, we're stuck at where we are, but I think if anything, it's just a timeline on which we uh, have to do these things. The, the endangered species list is one of those things that is already a straightforward thing probably, uh, but then all the updates need to be done as far as that goes, and that's good. Uh, another thing we're proposing this year is um, some licenses and fees that I would talk to you later about that. Um, there's a bunch of stuff. Okay, so just, just to recap, um, we're going to have another meeting and we're also going to discuss the offenses and the level of offenses, recurrences of offenses, and the fee proposed for each offense uh, with the uh, Attorney General and other stakeholders. Uh, the next we will do is the uh, Department of Agriculture will resubmit figures, well not DOA, but you guys will resubmit the figures for length for every species within the next couple of weeks to the compiler of laws. Are we tracking that? Um, I don't know about within the next couple of weeks. We're okay. going to be working on the uh, action plan during, until the end so of the So after the, the action plan perhaps? 
Okay, okay. And then we have the 600 feet contour in the compiler laws that reads 60 feet, so we need to make that correction. We also need to address yeah. the sea cucumbers yeah. for yeah, non-commercial. That, that uh, 600 foot contour is also in the amended regulations as well. So we need to fix that. Yeah. As, we need to fix the 60 foot that is there in the laws. Okay, because it's a typo. I yes. I, I guess it is. Okay. And then the sea cucumber for non-commercial use change uh, the amount of that they can, the take limit. And what, what did uh, we didn't put out a recommended number for take limit? You said five. Uh, uh, regarding the 600-foot the, the contour, contour issue, uh, was was uh, was uh, during uh, Director Torres' time. Torres, right? uh, what had happened was there was proposal up to the legislature, I believe. No, he said it was adopted. It's just a matter, it's the one that was yeah. lost by the compiler. So that's, yeah. that settled. Yeah, but that's how it came about. Yeah, so that's... And it that's wasn't adopted, but yeah, it was not adopted. No, they but said we it was adopted. The oh, sorry, the regulations were passed. It just needs to go to the compiler of laws for their part. But you're following the 60-foot contour that's because correct. that's what's in the that's law. That's one that right. was So that you just need to change the yes. number. Yes, the 60-foot was not approved, right. but it was inputted. It's a typo. It's yes. not that no one did their the work. It's just a typo. agreed upon. That's what we were told. Okay. That's why we okay. couldn't enforce it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then the sea cucumber take amount, five, five pieces. That's my recommendation. Okay. Per person, per day. Uh, okay. Regarding that, because... Um, uh, I usually attend some of the advisory meetings uh, with, and uh, with the Westpac Council. We have some of the local fishermen that are, uh, some of the local fishermen that are on the advisory committees. And one of the recommendations there has to be a rationale behind why we're choosing five. So I need yeah. to get with the Marine Lab to find out that okay. limit. So we need like a scientific approach yeah. more to to that council. Yeah. Okay. So are we going to have to wait a couple of weeks until after the state action plan? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then um, we're going to look at the option of excluding octopus for commercial sales. Is that, is that okay? Yeah, that's up because as of right now, it's a misdemeanor sales. Yeah. And then... Uh, there's actual uh, want a need for that or a want from local fishermen to exclude it from the law. But we that's, again, up to others then okay and then you have the November 28th to input the conservation officers piece yes ma'am into the state uh, action speak plan. Madam, to make it easier and we'll do the follow-up on the specific because we've been really looking at the state action plan if you look at the old uh, state action plan that they're trying to do the revision we're in there already with the five uh, priorities with five requirements we are in agreement with those requirements Right, that has, in other words, nothing has to be done, just keep it in place. I will, we will uh, follow up with specifics to each of those five steps that we are incorporating indirectly and to follow up with uh, DAR. Okay. I just, I just also want to mention that some of the, if we're going to take out some species, I also need to consult with some of the technical staff that are working on these that are within our division as well. Okay, and if you need more help or anything that you need from us to help you ensure that you are in the state action plan, you need to let us know because the deadline is November 30, and I'm asking you guys to get it done by November 28 so that they have time also to input it into their documentation. You're done tomorrow. And then um, in, in, in those, yes, push, push your mic. In the, in LT, push your mic. You're correct, ma'am, but in that also, we've actually completed stuff. Yes. Already. So we'll give you so a. You that's what we're saying. It's, it's we already in it there. Up. Yeah. Okay. It's in place. Nothing has to be done. We'll do yeah. specifics to back up what we've done as far as like three out of the five. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. But there's no actual heavy duty work like doing. Okay. Uh, more research because it's in place already in the old plan. It's already in, a, in, it's a in place. It's just write it's just just write right. it up. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And then we need, we're going to look at the change in the ESA Article 2 for the timeline to, oh, I'm sorry, for 63205C to state as needed the list that you, you guys are supposed to put, I think, as you mentioned, 14 months or yearly. So as needed, it's maybe. Be, I think the law says yearly, but, but I think it's. 14 months. So how about maybe like every five years? Uh, <laughs> I mean, 
Because as needed, you know, I mean, we probably won't be here and then sure. someone will say, well, there's no need. Like, right. how do we determine the need? Yeah. So perhaps every yeah. five years, at least we put some kind of time limit. Timeline, I, yeah. Okay, all right, very good. I want to thank all of you for coming in today thank and thank you. you for your hard work that you continue to do to protect our resources. Um, and hopefully we can continue to work together in the future because I think that uh, your jobs is much bigger than, than either of us. You, you are protecting and sustaining our island's environment and also, um, you know, also ensuring that we do things the right way for future generations. So uh, I, I applaud you for the work that you do and, and the scientific approaches that you use and also for your law enforcement efforts. Okay, thank you very much. This exhausts all our, our agenda for the roundtable hearing. I'd like to thank all of you for coming. God bless, thank you.